My name is Gabor Marton. I'm from Hungary, Budapest, and I'm pretty excited to be here. Um, I work in the finance industry, and besides that, I'm a PhD student. Um, my advisor is Zoltan Porkolab. He sits in the second row. He's also the co-author of, of this presentation. Um, so I would like to talk about friends and unit tests. Uh, yesterday, we had the presentation about dependency injection. Chris uh, had it. And tomorrow, we will have another presentation about dependency injection by Sebastian. And this is really cool because dependency injection is a wonderful thing uh, regarding to testing. But in this presentation, I would like to show you a bit of a different viewpoint in, in with regard to testing. So first, I would like to speak a few words about the basics, just to make sure that we are on the same page. Then uh, I would like to show you a running example, a case study, where I'd like to demonstrate how our original design can be decayed just because of adding tests. And then at, at the last part of the presentation, I would like to show you how we imagine testing in the distant future. So because of the strict timing, please, um, I would like to ask you to group your questions to the second half of the presentation. So OK. Let's start. I, I wish if life was so easy, if we would have only pure functions, uh, testing would be so easy. Right? Unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but this is the way and this is the world that we are living in. We have tremendous amount of object-oriented code. And some things are, of course, really easy and really natural to express in, in an object-oriented way. We have state, we have behavior, uh, we have encapsulation. And the thing is that our objects are commonly dependent on other objects. And uh, these dependencies... So over the years, we have seen that, that there can be really harmful um, dependencies and, and bad patterns. For example, the singleton pattern. Um, so the key here is that we want to have loosely coupled systems. We want to have our components to do not depend on the implementation of other components. Therefore, we are using interfaces and pointers or references to interfaces when, when we design our components. So generally speaking, uh, we have uh, units of system under test. And we have some sort of dependencies from other objects. Uh, these dependencies might be really heavy. Just imagine, for example, a, a something which represents a network connection or a database connection. And in the unit test, what we want is, is to replace these dependencies with some sort of test doubles, because we want our test to be fast. And we don't want to launch, for example, the whole uh, database server, or we don't want to download the internet just because of unit testing, right? So that's the basics. <coughs> So to test object-oriented code, we, we need to replace these heavy dependencies. Also, regarding to white box testing, we, sometimes we need, we need to do white box testing. And in that case, we need to access these internal states in order to exercise the test, so to set up the test, and to, to make assertions on these internal states. So let's get back again to this. What happens when, when you have uh, no explicit interfaces in your source code? So this is what happens when the programmer had, had not test, so, so he had not the testing in his mind. So. This is something like when, even when the programmer calls a global function. Uh, 
this is a wired in dependency. There's, there are no interfaces. So how can we test in such situations? We could use, for example, the linker to help us. We could use the preprocessor. But both of these techniques have their own disadvantages. Um, so we might come up with another solution. So, so we would be able to pick up our X and try to, you know, try to refactor the code and try to put in those interfaces we need to be able to test our code. But this is often a vicious circle. Imagine a large code base which you, which you want to refactor. But in order to refactor, you need to have unit tests because otherwise you cannot be sure that things are working. But in order to have unit tests, you need to refactor, right? Have you seen such situation? OK. So we arrive to the case study. Let's imagine a simple class, this little entity class, which has a private vector. And then it's, it's really simple. We can add elements to the vector. And then in the process member function, we would summarize these elements plus the parameter. And we would return with that value. So down here, you can see just a documentary test case. Tests are even for documentation as well, not just for uh, verification. So the next day, the boss comes to us and asks, hey, Gabor, I like your code. Can you make it work in a multi-thread environment? And of course, we can make it work. So one pretty simple idea would be to protect the private variable with a mutex. So in the process member function, we decide to somehow return with a special value in, case, in that case when we cannot get the lock. So this code is a little bit crippled because I could be using const in the, so the, the member function process could be better be a const function. Also, I could be using unsigned uh, instead of the int. And I could be using some sort of resource acquisition. So log, log guard instead of the explicit locking and unlocking. But I decided to leave this slide as it is because it's <laughs> smaller and it fits on a slide. Oh, some problems. So this is our perfectly natural design. This is what we want to test, right? So because of adding a mutex and adding this extra behavior, which depends on the trilog, we want to test it because that is very important to verify and to document our uh, units, right? So this, this is something like, this is what we would like to achieve, something like this. So when the trilog fails, we ex expect a value. And when it not fails, we expect another value. It's OK. So our first idea might be to extend the public interface. So we would add a getter function. And in the test, we would lock the mutex in this way, setting up the return value of the trilog. So this is not the best we can come up with. Uh, since we are ruining the encapsulation, we are giving away our internals. We are giving away the mutex to the world. And regarding the test, we are using std mutex lock. So we are using a wider interface uh, that has been used in the unit itself. So we are relying on the mutex implementation and how the mutex itself works in the test code. So this is not a good thing, because test will be more dependent on the, on the std mutex uh, behavior. Also, we, we tend to forget the, the basic goal, which is to try to replace the heavyweight dependencies. So we are not replacing anything here. 
And imagine if, if, if this member was on the mutex. So it, it, it was, for example, something which represents a database connection. We definitely would want to, to replace that with some sort of a test double, right? So the next logical step would be to introduce a runtime interface with virtual functions. And this interface would have uh, two implementations, one for the production code and one for the test code. And in this pure little entity class, we would add an extra constructor where we would be able to inject the actual mutex implementation. Well, this is some very simple dependency injection, I would say. Um, OK, so this is how the production of the test code would look like. Now we have really, really nicely decoupled test code. We can replace the, the, the production implementation with the test double. But still, in the production code, there's nothing which prevents any other production usage to reuse or misuse the mutex, right? Somebody has to own that mutex. And this is something uh, problematic with encapsulation. So what happened here is that we introduced, so instead of, of a single containment, we introduced a reference. And this, this is something which feels really unnatural because what we have done, we torn apart some otherwise extremely cohesive things. So the mutex and the entity. That mutex is totally the internal thing of, of, of that entity. So ownership is a bit violated, right? Then we also added an extra constructor. We have an extra interface with virtual functions. Um, that might not be really uh, performance. Just think about the, the indirections we might have. Also, via this reference, we, we have pointer semantics. So this is, again, not so good regarding the cache locality. So the first thing which really the, the verse the, the, is, is, is the ownership problem. That's, that's the most dangerous problem. So we would like to solve that by using a unique pointer and passing a unique pointer via the constructor. Again, uh, since we pass the mutex via the constructor and as a unique pointer, the entity is a unique owner, this means. So in the test, we would not be able to exercise that mutex anymore. So somehow we need to have access, extra access for the mutex. So in, in this case, what we do is that we introduce an extra getter. So, but at least ownership is fine. Another idea is to, to have compile time interfaces and introducing a, a, a template type parameter, type template parameter then it, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty obvious. The difference is that we don't need to use uh, virtual functions and inheritance. So this is how uh, we could set up the result return value of the trilog function. And life is easy this way. OK, but uh, using, using templates uh, might result in, 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 in bigger compilation time, as, as we've seen in the previous presentation. Um, so one idea would be to combine this, this, this technique together with Pimple. So let's put this entity template into a detail namespace. It, it would be a good practice to put it at, uh, in a separate file as well, so like under detail slash entity HPP. Then we would have the front end of the template in the entity.hpp file, 
and all the production code, all the components of the production code would include only this header. So we have this uh, implementation structure uh, forward declared here, and our goal and our task is to define this forward declared structure in the translation unit of the entity. So what we would like to express is that in the production code, we are using the entity template instantiated with the two mutex. And since we cannot use a type alias to in, in this way, it's, 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 it's simply not working, we would be using inheritance and we could delegate the constructors. The rest of the slide is the pimple machinery. Um, we need to define the, the destructor here because of the unique pointer. Scott Myers has a really good explanation about this in, in effective modern C++. So this is how the production the test code looks like. In the test code, we are not testing anything as just the template. And this has that drawback. We are not testing the pimple implementation itself. Um, so why we are doing this? We are doing this because we, we expect that the performance will be a bit better, the, comp the compilation time and performance. But runtime performance, because of this uh, pointer, the pimple pointer itself, and so we, we would do heap allocations, right, because of the pimple. Uh, so instead of this regular pimple, we, would be, we could use fast pimple mechanism. Do you know uh, how that works? Is there anybody who is not familiar with the, with the fast? OK. So this is essentially about to have a type erased buffer uh, as a member in your class. So instead of a pointer, you have a type erased buffer with, with a certain uh, size, and then you would create the implementation object in place at the address of that uh, buffer. Okay. So certainly we introduced extra complexity into our code, so we are just moving really far away from our original really clear design and intentions. Um, for the record, we could be using external template declarations, and we might hope that compilation time would be an, a bit better. But we shall not forget that each and every header which is included in the entity header will be reparsed uh, in every translation unit. But if we would have modules, then this might be in a, in a different way. Again, uh, using this technique is complex as well. So this is where we are now. We introduced this uh, type template parameter and the getter. This getter is still violating encapsulation, so it would be really nice if we could get rid of it. <laughs> so this is some, some idea, but we can skip it really fast because it's it, it just, it just worse, right? Another idea. Uh, <laughs> OK. So what's the problem with it? First, nobody should do this. <laughs> uh, second, it's, it's undefined behavior because it's, it's, it's not stated in the standard that if you have members with different access specifier, then the order is not specified. So you have this object layout uh, in production code and the other layout in the testing code. But if, if you are not really depending on the object layout, who knows? OK, so another problem is that everything which is included in the entity header, all the other 
headers will give away their internals. So it's like the world is opening up and hell. <laughs> so um, instead of the, this, this simple getter, we might want to define a friend function. And that friend function would return the reference to the mutex. Uh, this is how we would test it. Really simple. We could develop this idea further. So we would come up with a friend class. This, is a, uh, this, this can be handy because, uh, for example, we can define an accessor or getter function for every uh, member and, it, and it, it's, it could be really also useful to, to make that getter a template because in that case we would be able to reuse uh, this function template in all kind of different uh, test doubles. Let's imagine you have not, ju not just this test double but a fake mutex whatever. So again Further developing this ID, we might want to be rigorous and we might state that only just the test case functions can access this mutex. So, this is actually the attorney client idiom because, the, as in real life, the attorney, which is the entity test friend, so as in real life, the attorney decides what he will give away for, for the word about the secrets of his client, right? So he will definitely not tell all the secrets of the client for the, for the media, right? In this case, the client is, of course, the entity. And this is uh, the usage of this specific attorney client idiom with respect to testing. <coughs> Okay, so this is, this is where we are now. Now we replaced the, the getter with a friend structure. But just because of testing, we added these two things. And this, this, these are really intrusive changes. So we are really far away from, from our original design. Um, uh, this situation kind of reminds me to the, to the days when exceptions was non-existent. That time, it was really hard to see the successful path because uh, error handling code was kind of interwoven with the successful path. Of course, it depends on, on, on programming style. It can be done right, but I think you get the point. I, f I feel the, a bit, this, this situation is a bit similar because testing code is invading our simple design. So how can we eliminate this extra getter? Uh, imagine if, if you have some sort of a micro library which defines things and stuff, and then you would be able to access this private variable without intrusively adding a getter. Uh, Actually, this is working, and this is valid C++ code. Um, how this is working, uh, this is the simplest case. So we have a class A with a static int variable. In every context where we want to access that variable, we would get a compile time error, because that's private, right? Except one context, which is explicit template instantiation. Uh, so we have this private access template which is explicitly instantiated here. So how could the template definition itself look like? So this, this uh, class template has a non-type template parameter, which is actually an integral, more, more specifically a pointer parameter. Since the address of the static variable is known as compile time, we can return that in this uh, function. So the idea here is to define a function which can be called and accessed without 
writing down the template par parameters of this uh, class. So by defining this function as a friend function, what we do is that we define the function in the enclosing scope of the class template. But this time, it is not available for normal lookup, so we won't be able to call it. If we would rely on ADL, we would be able to call it, but this function does not have any parameters, so argument-dependent lookup will not work. So what can we do? We can make normal lookup to find it. So we declare in the enclosing scope this function. And that's it. So we can use it in this way. Really simple. Is it okay? So the same can be done with non-static uh, members as well and with member functions, of course. The difference is that we are using a different pointer type. That would be a uh, that would be a pointer to member, and the usage is different, of course, because we need to bind uh, the pointer to member to an object. But essentially, the the method is the same. So this this uh, this approach has also drawbacks, and and it's it's not working in every cases but it is working for most of the cases. Um, OK. So this picture is here because this is about a wonderful lake in Hungary. This is Lake Balaton. And I really love this landscape, and I enjoy being there. And it really makes me feel relaxed and calm. And so hope you feel the same when you look on this picture. Uh, this is important because the next slides might be a bit disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's get to that. So imagine if we would do this. So instead of these tricks you have seen previously, this is of course not valid C++, but the idea is the key here. So why not? Do, why not have an out-of-class friend declaration with respect to tests? It would make life, life such much more easier. You've seen previously the other methods are really cumbersome. So, but actually, uh, in this case, we don't need to touch and we don't need to do anything with this pure real entity. It can remain as it was. Uh, before the need of that testing. So our design can remain as it was in, in, in the natural, most simple way as we dreamed about it, right? So, but actually I'm, I'm, I'm lying a little bit because we would need to call the mutex.lock here. And in the first approach, you have seen that that's using a wider interface and that's not really the best thing we can do. So we might step we might step back one step. So actually it would be better to combine that with a template parameter. Um, a few words about this out of class friend thing. So um, we really think that this, this, the need is there. So in some tests and in some test cases, we want to access privates. Either way or another way, we will do that. We are engineers, we can do that. But it is the best if we can do that the most clear way, right? So why not do that in this way? So what about encapsulation? 
They think that, that the good language should prevent accidental failures, but that cannot be accidental if you write down friend for that's, that, that, that the chance is pretty low, right? So it can be searchable. It should be used only in testing, even with some sort of compiler switches. Just think about assertions. How you do assertions today? You have minus d debug to enable or disable them. And just think about <coughs> contracts. They might even work in a similar way. OK. Um, yeah, just in some cases, you might want to test, for example, a third party code, which which is, uh, so you want to validate that it, it is doing what it is advertised to do. So you don't want to, and you, for example, you, you cannot uh, tamper into that source of that third party library, but still you want to make sure that is working. So this is another use case for, for this thing. Okay, um, let's move on a little bit. So. A few words about how we imagine the future uh, with respect to testing. It, it would be wonderful if, if, we, if, we, if we wouldn't need to test, uh, sorry, we wouldn't, we wouldn't need to modify the, the, this entity class itself just because of testing. So it would be nice if we could separate the testing code entirely from our design. So. Imagine if we, if we would be able to define a new type based on the original type, but all the occurrences and all, all the uh, so all the occurrences of stupid mutex would be replaced with a stub mutex and test double. Then we would test this synthesized type. So that's the idea. What do we need for this to be working? We need. We would need compile time reflection, but not just introspection. We need reification, which is the capability to define variables, functions, whatever, based on reflected meta information. Um, this solution would be working only if the compiler can see all the definitions, because Otherwise, we would not be able all the to replace all the occurrences of the student mutex type. So essentially, it would be working nice only when, when, when all your code is header only. But as I see, hopefully in the future, we will have modules. And that would make this kind of uh, programming better. Um, there are some questions and some some open questions regarding to to this uh, vision. For example, imagine if you have a member function with with the student mutex as a local variable. Uh, would we want to replace that as well, or just the member type? So this could be some sort of a part of a policy or, or something like that. Okay, I think. That's it. So thank you very much. Um, yeah. Just, just sorry, I forgot to mention that the macro library, which um, tears away the privates, is accessible here. And we also have a proof of concept implementation for this out of class friends, which is actually implemented in a pretty simple way. We were, we were not really dealing with the, with the parsing uh, difficulties. We are using an attribute, a special attribute, friend form attribute. And what happens actually is that in the semantic action of that attribute, we create the very same AST node, which is created when you have an in-class defined friend function. So it's, it's pretty easy. It's like I don't know, less than 50 lines of code. Mm. 
but this is this is a proof of concept implementation. Okay, thank you very much again, and if you have some questions, please go ahead. Oh, yes. Why is the slide labeled 50 out of 49? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's just a distraction. <laughs> so the, the question was, why is the slide labeled, labeled 50 out of 49? So I said that's to distract the people. But uh, OK, that's a mistake, of course. Yep. Yeah, I have a, uh, real question. Real question. I can see that this tactic helps with a simple uh, test to gain access to the mutex. Um, my own more complex classes, it would be useful to be able to do a dependency injection to replace the mutex in the production instantiation of the class under test. And have you played with dependency injection other than the ways that you've um, shown us in these slides? So the question is, have I played dependency injection other than the way I've shown in the slides? So. What kind of other way do you mean? So as I uh, think about dependency injection is either you inject a reference or a pointer to, to an interface via a setter or via a constructor, or via uh, a dependency injection framework. But this does not change the fact that you have to have a reference or a pointer to that interface. And this is what makes you giving away your internal mutex to the dependency injection framework, to the production code. OK? I, I don't know if, if it's, it's an answer to your okay. question. Yes? Uh, I was wondering, because when you replace the mutex with the star or the fake one, the fake one will have to have the same constructors parameters, yeah? Because if you just replace it, usually when you have a mod or something like that, you don't care about the constructor parameters, yeah? But here you have to deal with that as well. Okay, so the question or the comment is that uh, why I don't have the same uh, signature for the constructor of the test double of the mutex as the real production code mutex, right? Uh, and I mean, like, usually when you have a mock, you don't have to write any constructor for it because it's the default one, yeah? Because everything is fake. But here, when you replace the type, for example, std mutex may have a constructor parameters which are part in the real code, and the fake one will have to deal with that as well, yeah? Yeah, that's right. Um, so, my answer is that in case of the testing, when, when you do that with, with the type template parameters, you just need to provide only that functions which are really used by the, by the class, right? Because that uh, set of public functions or, or the, the interface of, of the test double can be just a subset of the, of the production interface, right? So in this case, uh, as this is what exactly happening. We are just using the try lock. And the and uh, okay no it's uh, in the process function but but in the other function we are using okay lock and then that's that's true but uh, so it's okay okay so, so the question was why why the signature is not the same I mean it does we have to maintain. The mod as, as to have to the same interface constructor as the, the real one. Yeah? So if you change the uh, interface for the constructor to the new text, you'll have to change the sub as well because you replace it and you may use it in the real code, so the table will have to have the same. Uh. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, but I, I think that's, that's, that's what exactly happening. You, you provide the test double which has the same signatures, right? Um, for your yep. Double, like even if you're using it as a template, it could still inherit from something. 
Yeah. yeah. It's good. Yeah. 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 Um, in in this specific case, the student text uh, has just a simple default constructor, so it's it's not a problem here. Okay. So, uh, you, so sorry. The the question was, uh, or the comment was that that I could do inheritance in case of the template uh, type parameter as well. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, if there are no other questions, time is up. <laughs> okay, thank you.